you have a WordPress website, hackers are trying to get into it. That's not an if that is just a matter of when it's going to happen. It could be happening today, could be happening right now while you're watching this. I can tell you from personal experience, hackers are always trying to get into my websites. Fortunately, there are things you can do about it. And that's what we're going to go over in this video. This is probably going to be one of the most important videos that you watch regarding your WordPress website, because you've got to protect the asset that you've built. Hi, my name is William Beam with Suburbia Press. And what do I know about security? Well, first off, I am a certified information system security professional. If you're not familiar with that, that is probably one of the most highly sought after certifications in the cybersecurity industry. I've been doing this for a long time. I started with cybersecurity and protection in the mid 90s, and I've been doing it up until today. So I've worked with small companies and large companies. I've worked with Lockheed Martin and PwC. I've worked with Lucent Technologies, but I've also worked with small schools and trade schools and things of that nature, and also with some clients. So I've got a good bit of experience with cybersecurity and also a lot of that with WordPress because I've been using WordPress pretty much since it came out. And fortunately for me, I've never had my WordPress site hacked, but there are a lot of things that are out there and I can tell that people are trying all the time. So we're going to talk about that in this video. We're going to talk about, you know, why did they try to hack you? How do they find your site? What kind of attacks are they going to try on your site? What can you do about it? And we'll go over a few things like that. Let's talk about security in a nutshell. And this is not just for WordPress. This is for any kind of security that you can think about. The first thing you have to do is to identify the attack surface. Basically, that means where are the places where someone can attack your site? Think about this like physical security. If you have a building or maybe if you're old fashioned and you've got a fort, how many ways can someone get into your site? Obviously, they can come in through the front door. They can smash a window. You know, if we're talking about forts. Could they have a tunnel leading into your site? Can they parachute down into it? How many ways can someone get into your site? And with WordPress, there are quite a lot of them. So you need to understand and identify all the different ways that someone could gain access to your WordPress site. The next thing you want to do is you want to reduce the attack surface. In other words, now that you know all the ways someone can get into your site, start closing some of those doors, you know, bar the windows, whatever you have to do. And we'll talk about different techniques to do that as well. But what you need to do is know what the attack surface is and then reduce the attack surface. So there are fewer places where they can get in. After you've reduced them and you've only got the ones that you need for access in and out of your site, now you need to harden them. Don't make it so easy for someone to slip through those remaining portals that go into your site. You want to eliminate the ones that you don't need. And then the ones that you do need, you want to have checkpoints. You want to have a guard at the gate, so to speak, that is going to harden that site. And the next step, you want to raise the cost of an attack. A lot of these attackers are using bots. They're very lazy. They're doing an automated scripts. And it's not like someone is usually trying to attack you personally because that takes time. It slows them down. If you can raise the cost of an attack where the bot doesn't work anymore, and if they want to get in your site, they have to manually do it. They're probably going to give up and go to an easier target. So you want to raise the cost of an attack. And that's actually pretty simple to do. So we're going to talk about a few of those things in the rest of this video. So you might be wondering, how do hackers find your site in the first place? And I found this when I put up a brand new WordPress website. I haven't published anything on it yet. And already I can tell there are hackers trying to get into it. They're trying to do brute force attacks and other things. How do they know? Well, there are a few different ways that they can find out because they're always on the lookout for a sucker. And new sites are usually the suckers. So one of the first things they do is IP scanning. They're scanning internet protocol or IP addresses, they kind of know where the web hosts are. They know which ones are strong. They wouldn't know which ones are weak, but they're scanning all of them. And what they're looking for are any IPs that have files or folders that are related to WordPress. So they're doing that IP scan. They want to see if they can find a new sucker that has the folders that they're looking for. They're also doing web server scanning. As I said, they know who the web servers are. So they're going to continuously scan those web servers. And that's usually a web host provider, but they might find that some providers are not the same as others. Some are good, some are bad, and they're going to keep on scanning. They're going to look for a weakness any way they can find to get in. And they're going to look for new sites that aren't already on their list. Another one is called DNS enumeration. Basically, if they know your domain, they might try 
subdomains. They might look for common things like, do you have a support site? Well, you might have support.domainname.com. And they're going to try a few other things like that. So DNS enumeration is just another way that they can find WordPress sites. And this one is certificate transparency logs. You may not have heard about this, but whenever you get a secure sockets layer certificate or SSL certificate, there is a transparency log that is published. In other words, they let everybody in the world know that you just got a certificate or you just got an update to your certificate and that is public knowledge. So all they have to do is monitor those transparency logs and they'll say, hey, there's a good chance that there's a site here that we can go and try and get our way into it. All right, so let's talk about WordPress attack services. There are a number of ways that people can get into WordPress and by default, WordPress enables a lot of these things. You can very easily disable them and we're gonna go over some of them right now. I'd say half the passwords out there or half the attacks that get into a website are from weak passwords. And that's people who are doing like a password that says password or password one, two, three, or something that's just so weak, so lame. They're well known. And people do this because they're easy for them to remember. But what they forget is that other people know these passwords too. And that's where brute force techniques often work. So you need to come up with passwords that are stronger. They're gonna be a mix of characters and numbers and maybe some special characters like a dash or something of that nature. And you wanna have a certain length to them. It used to be eight characters was enough. Now people are looking for 12 character passwords at a minimum. So have long passwords with a mix of letters and numbers. And it's tempting to use a word that you know. Honestly, these days, it's better just to have random characters in there. And there are password generators that you can use that will create these passwords for you. You can use programs like 1Password or LastPass. They're built into some browsers like Google Chrome that'll manage your passwords for you. I don't even know most of my passwords because I can't pronounce them. I can't remember them. I rely on these password managers to help me. So that's my single point of failure if somebody gets into that, but then I make certain that they don't get into that. All right, plugins and themes. Basically, software is where a lot of things happen. So if, if bad passwords are one problem, Really poorly written plugins and themes are another problem. And I use the word poorly written, kind of cheeky. That's because some of the best plugins and theme developers out there still provide updates that occasionally have an error in it that allows someone to get in. And that's why you're always being told to update your plugins and themes because yeah, they may create a hole, but then once they find out about it, they're going to fix it. A vendor that I trust very much is WP Manage Ninja. About a month or two before I created this video, I got on a security alert, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, but basically the security alert says, this week, here are the plugins and themes that we know of that had a security breach, and whether or not there is a patch available for them. And one of the products from WP Manage Ninja was on there. They fixed it very quickly and immediately, but it still happened because when you're dealing with a lot of code, you know, things can happen and unexpected results happen. They do a lot of testing at reputable vendors. But what about the vendors that aren't so reputable? Well, maybe they don't have the resources to do all the testing. Or worse than that, you might find some plugins or themes that are created by people who are a little bit malicious. They promise you one thing. You say, oh, that's great. I'll go get this free plugin or this free theme. And then they're doing something in the background that you didn't know about. In other words, it's kind of like a Trojan horse. So you need to deal with reputable vendors. And that is kind of where we talk about untrustworthy software. What else goes into your WordPress site? Typically it's gonna be plugins and things that cause you to crash your WordPress theme or site are often going to be plugins because one plugin may conflict with another one and that causes an opening for somebody else. Make certain that you're getting your software from reputable vendors, preferably someone who sells their software. That doesn't mean that you can't use free plugins or themes. I do, but I also know that there is an upgrade path that they have a professional version that they sell. And that's why I know they have a good incentive to make certain that their software is strong and secure and it helps protect their reputation. If something goes wrong, they will fix it quickly. All right, this one I like because I've seen this happen before with bad hosting. 
And you think, well, what does my host have to do with it? Well, there's more than one way to get into your WordPress website. So it's not just a matter of trying to log into it. Sometimes with bad hosting, particularly little mom and pop shops who don't have the budget to put in a lot of security, they may be a lower price, but they also may lack security, which means that if somebody can break into their server, then they can have access to all the WordPress sites that are on that server. And you have no knowledge about that. So you need someone who has the resources to protect their servers very well and their network very well to keep someone from breaking in. Shared hosting is a one way that this can happen. People can sometimes break into one WordPress website with poor security. They can then have access to escalate their permissions. And maybe if they get up to the server level rather than just their little shared level, then they've got access to all of the other WordPress websites on there. That's one of the reasons I hate shared hosting. I prefer a virtual private server. Each one is secure and separate from the others. If the hosting is bad, then there are risks because they're not taking care of security. File editing. By default, there is a file editor in WordPress. You want to turn that off because that means if someone does get access into your WordPress site, then if they've got the file editor, they've got permissions through that to go change any of the files on your WordPress site. So they can replace things, they can add code into them, they can update links. You want to disable file editing. There is a little communication protocol called XML-RPC. So XML is a file structure. RPC stands for Remote Procedure Call. So basically what this means, it's a way of communication between your WordPress site and another service. And sometimes people can log in using this because services have to authenticate. And this is something else that is a door or an attack surface for your site. I would recommend that you disable XML-RPC on your site. User accounts are a traditional way of people getting into your site. And even if you have different permissions, you know, some people are administrators or editors or authors, or maybe just subscribers, every single user account has the potential to be escalated to administrator level. This happened back in 2018 with something we're going to talk about. It was a error with cross-site scripting, but there is a, a plugin called social warfare and the company is still out warfare plugins. A lot of people stopped using them because they put out a product update and there was something called a zero day exploit. In other words, news of the problem that they had with their cross-site scripting got out before they could make a patch. And then within a matter of minutes, you could go to somebody's WordPress website and find a list of all the users, escalate the privileges of those users, and then you could completely take over the site. So that is just one of the problems with user accounts. If you don't need to have people logging into your website, then by all means, don't. In some cases, you may want to have a separate WordPress website where people are going to log in. Perhaps if you're going to have a support site, you may not want that on your main blog or your main commerce site because you want to separate to protect things a little bit. So yeah, there are times when you need to have end users logging into your website. And if that's so, try to keep them away from your business or cash generating websites. If there are users that maybe have a login because you had a vendor that was providing you with support, make certain that you close that off. There are plugins out there, and I'll put a link in the description here, where you can set a time limit on how long they have access. So that way, in case you forget to go back and remove that account, it'll downgrade their access so they can't come back in later on and do something without your knowledge. Yeah, you do need to occasionally to get support. You do need to give them administrator access to troubleshoot a problem, but make certain that when you're done, you audit those accounts and get rid of them, or at the very least, disable them, reduce their authority on your site. All right, so why do hackers attack? There are a number of reasons that hackers are gonna come over here and attack your website. And it's just really all over the place. It could be anybody from a kid that's found a script or to professional hackers that are looking for ways to expand their reach. But let's go over a few of those reasons. First one is for some of them, it's fun. They actually have contests to see who can hack websites, who can deface websites and see who can do the most of them within a given period. Some people do this just because for them, it's fun. Never mind what they've done to you and all the problems it's caused. They just get a thrill out of hacking into a website. It's a challenge. 
They may want to deface your website. They may want to replace the content on your website. And that is something else. It's kind of like, you know, tagging in bad neighborhoods. They want to say, I was here. They want to put up their little logo for whatever their hacker name is to let everybody know that they got on your site. And that's kind of like their calling card. I was here. Data theft is probably one of the more common things to do. And some things they can do is get a list of all the usernames on your website, people who have access to your WordPress to log in. They may want to get anything that's in your databases. They want to find out customer information. So the data theft is clearly a big one. Spamming or phishing platforms. A lot of these people like to take over your site so that it will work on their behalf. In other words, they will start spamming people with either email or maybe sending off phishing notices to people. And they're going to be trying to get customers for their benefit. And it's going to affect your reputation for your domain name, because if it's sending off emails from those spam emails or from the uh, phishing emails that go out, that's going to affect your domain name because people are going to complain about those and your reputation to send email is going to go right down the toilet. Then there's SEO spam or hidden links. Basically, this is where somebody clicks a link on your site. Instead of going to where you want it to, it goes off to a porn site or it goes off to something else. They're going to put links over there to get backlinks so that they rank higher on their website, or at least they think they do, because Google and other search engines value backlinks in order to raise your profile to look better on search engine optimization. So they may take over your site just because they think that you've got some authority that you can raise their profile because they can't get a link from you any other way. They may want to distribute malware, which helps them break into more sites or perhaps infect your visitors so that they can get information that way. That's just another platform. So again, your reputation is at stake if someone is hosting malware on your WordPress website and it's being distributed by people downloading something from your site. There are botnets or denial of service attacks that happen. So again, the botnets are just like this mesh network where they install a bot on your site, and then it goes ahead and runs whatever instructions they want them to. Denial of service attacks, again, are a way of crashing someone else's site. Now imagine this, if you got thousands and thousands of bots on different WordPress websites and you decide you want to attack ibm.com, for example, then that's going to put a strain on their network load and you're going to be at risk because your site is seen as attacking someone else's site. Now they're not going to necessarily do it at major corporations like IBM. They may do it for other WordPress websites. Then again, major corporations also use WordPress. You never know how they're going to attack or who they're going to attack, but if they can get something on your site that's going to send communication out and deny service to others, that's something you don't want to have on your reputation. All right, I mentioned links. Another thing is they could just redirect your entire domain. So if someone goes to your site, and instead of going to your site, they get redirected probably to a porno site because that seems to be the most common thing that they do. But they want to redirect your visitors to another site. That's going to have a bad user experience for anybody who's coming to your site. And they're probably not going to come back again because they don't want to see that kind of trash. They may redirect it to another site that's filled with ads or something that's trying to take over their uh, browser and not let them back out. If you've ever seen that where you say, how did I get here? I can't get out of this thing. You have to close the browser down to do it. That's probably from a redirect attack. Credit card skimmers are another way. And this is one of the types of attacks we're going to go over. Rather than taking over your site, they're putting software on there that takes over the browser of the people who visit. And that's another way they can do data theft. So there are different communications and scripting methods that work on the WordPress site and communication and scripting methods that work on the browser that visits the site. So putting on a credit card skimmer is a good way to gather that information or do any kind of other data theft. All right, so those are the things that they want to do. That's why they want to do them. What are the methods that they do to attack them? I mentioned weak passwords are a problem. Brute force attacks happen all the time. So a brute force attack means that someone's coming to your site, probably a bot, and they're just trying to log in over and over again. They've got a list of passwords and they're probably using a known or suspected known user ID. So for example, the default login for WordPress is admin and the default password is admin. So that's the first thing they're going to try. 
They're going to try other combinations of user IDs. I've seen W admin W. I've seen WWW admin and a few other variations like that. And then they're going to go through a list of passwords that have been found and put up like on the dark web where they can download a list. And the bot is just going to go through and try to log in over and over again with the user list that they have and the passwords they have. Another one is called SQL injection. So this happens if you've got a form on your website. So let's say something like a contact form. And you're asking for a name, a comment to be put in there, maybe an email address. You might have some other fields on there. Forms that do a very poor job of restricting the kind of data that you can put inside of a field are susceptible to something called SQL injection. So in other words, if you have a name field, it should only accept text. It shouldn't accept numbers or other things like that. What happens is they take a piece of SQL code and they try to put it into all the fields on these forms to see if they can break the form protection and get to the underlying operating system of your website and talk to the SQL database that's underneath. And then once they can inject some code, then they're in. Then they can have that code do actions for them, which gives them access on another way. So they might be able to add their own user account, for example. But SQL injection is typically where they're trying to take advantage of weak form builders on your site. So you want to make certain that if you're going to put up a form on your site, is from a trusted vendor. Uh, one of the ones I like is Fluent Forms. So definitely trust them. They have a free version. And again, because they have a paid version, they take care of it. Fluent Forms is from WP Managed Ninja, which I mentioned earlier. Any vendor can occasionally have a problem that shows up on a list that comes out every week of you know plugins with problems and they go back and fix it. I still trust them. And that's why I use it on my site. Cross-site scripting. So this is something that I mentioned that happened with the uh, social warfare. Cross-site scripting allowed them to get access to any of the users that were out there. And this is just a common little theme of what happens. And once they get inside a cross-site scripting problem, it's something that they've got to know exists. The attacker has to know that it exists. And it allows them to put in code again to your website. File inclusion exploits. Do you allow people to upload files to your website? Well, what kind of files do you allow them to upload? Because if they can upload something that's executable or they can include this on your website somehow and then execute it, that is another way that they can get in there. So uploads, if you're going to have them, at least limit the file types so that they can't upload a script or something executable. Insecure file permission. So this is something they can find maybe when they're scanning your site and everything on your WordPress site has file permissions, whether it's running on a Linux or Unix server or even running on Windows, they all have file permissions. And those file permissions say for this type of user, can they read, can they write, and can they execute? You don't want to have everybody to be able to read, write, and execute. Now, reading, sure. People got a browser site, they at least need permissions to read. But your administrators and other functions that are going to be higher level, you don't want them to write anything to your database or execute. That's going to be reserved for the administrators or the small subset of people who are working to support your website. So you want to make certain that your file permissions are fine. Now, a quick and easy way to do this is usually with a security plugin. So we'll talk about that in a little bit later. We mentioned the XML RPC attacks. Easiest way to handle this is to turn it off. And the easiest way to turn it off is to use a plugin like a WordPress security plugin. They'll give you an option to do that. There is a way to turn this off with some other plugins that are performance based plugins that works as well, too. So I've got a plugin called Perf Matters. And one of the options that it has is to turn off XML RPC. Not only does that prevent attacks, but it also means that there's not another cycle going on in your server that's taking up you know, part of your CPU core. So if you don't need it, turn it off. How do you know if you need it? Well, if you turn it off and something doesn't work, you probably need it. But something like Jetpack, that's where this really came around. I don't really care for Jetpack, but some people still do use it. And it's using XML-RPC. So if you turn this off, you might be having a problem with that. My recommendation would be to get rid of Jetpack and use other services for it. 
Trojan horse, this is what we mentioned before. If you upload something that you think is going to do a great job for you, and it really has a nefarious purpose. That's why you want to use trusted, reputable vendors for any plugins or themes that you put on your site, because there are some places that will upload maliciously intended Trojan horses. PHP exploit. So this is the, the code that runs on WordPress. Basically, everything is PHP. It's a scripting language that runs on your server. If they can find a way to get into that and exploit the PHP, because there's a known weakness in a certain script. WordPress is full of scripts, but then again, so are a lot of the plugins and a lot of the themes. So all these different things have problems. A PHP exploit can happen when somebody updates something and they leave a little security gap. And if that's known by the, an attacker, they'll try to exploit that. Have I scared you yet? Because there's a whole lot of people out there trying to break into your site and there's a whole lot of ways that they can do them. But the truth is, if you know what the site entry points are, like I said, identify the attack service and you reduce those points and then you harden those points, you can do a really good job of protecting yourself. And the last point I mentioned was to raise the cost of the attack. That's what we're going to talk about in this little section. First thing you want to do is you want to create a new administrator account and then delete the default admin account. Everybody who's going to be a hacker is going to start off saying, can I get in as admin? Get rid of it. There's just no point in it. You want to use strong passwords. I'm going to recommend 12 character passwords with a mix of letters, some uppercase, some lowercase, a mix of numbers, and perhaps a special character. Uh, use a dash, use a colon or something that is along those lines. Maybe use an asterisk. Those are special characters. And mix them up. It doesn't have to be so many letters, so many numbers, and so many special characters. Create a mix. And if you want, use a password generator. If you don't have a tool like LastPass or 1Password, which those have password generators in them, just go to Google, search for password generator. You'll find a place where you can have it generate a password for you. And you can often have it set up how many characters it's going to be and what kind of criteria you want. So use strong passwords. Use multi-factor authentication. This is where you have something you have and something you know. The idea here is something you know is your user ID and password. And if people can guess that or they get it someplace else, then they get in. But something you have, that is where the two-factor authentication comes in. And usually that's going to be with a tool that randomly generates a code. Now, you've seen this happen probably if you get a text code with a code before you can log into your bank or some other service. There are authenticator tools that you can get for Windows or Mac, and you also have them on your mobile phone. I use one called Authy. There's also Google Authenticator, and there's probably a few others I maybe don't know about. The reason I like Authy is because it works on my phone, it works on Windows, it works on Mac. So that way, no matter where I am, I can have my Authenticator app with me, and it will sync up between devices. So if I'm on my desktop or if I'm on my laptop, I've still got access to all those codes. So no matter where I go, or if I've got my phone, I can just bring that up and get access to the codes. That way, when I go to log into something, it's going to ask me, do I know this six-digit code? And I look that up, I paste it in, and I'm good to go. I don't only use this on WordPress. I mean, I've got it on my PayPal account. I've got it on my server account to get in. I've got it on my domain registrar account because I got hacked on my domain registrar with GoDaddy one time. The way to get around that was to enable multi-factor. You may also hear it called as two-factor authentication. You definitely want to use a security plugin or service. And I say this because there are different ways that you can do this. So a security plugin, I've got one called WordFence. And the free version is a good start. It'll do a lot for you. Now, it's not completely up to date. They save that for the paid version. What, what this will do is not only will it tell you all the things that you can fix on your website and make it easy to do, so it's just like pushing a button or checking a box, it will also look for attacks that are happening and lock them out. It will look for people who are trying to log in repeatedly and after a certain number of times, lock them out. If someone tries to log in with a user ID that is not on your system, it'll block them for a period of time. 
And all those things do are hardening your site and raising the cost of an attack. If somebody tries to log in, they know they've got the right user ID, but they put in the wrong password, well, they get blocked. If they try to log in with the wrong account, let's say if you come to my site and try to log in with admin, that account doesn't exist, you're gonna get locked out for four hours, so your IP address won't be able to come back. How often do you think somebody's gonna try to log into my site every four hours? Now, there have been people who've tried it, and I just finally went to a place and blocked their IP address overall so that it wasn't every four hours that they could come back. But there are services out there where you can get a plugin or a service. Now, when you talk about services and plugins, WordFence is a plugin. There's a, another one called Securi. When they do put a plugin on your WordPress site, but they are a software as a service. In other words, things are happening before they get to your server. You can get this with some of your hosting. I use Cloudflare and they've got things that will protect me before someone ever gets to my WordPress server. And same thing with Cloudways. Cloudways is my host. Cloudflare is my edge protection for DNS. So Cloudways, they've got botnet detectors. So does uh, Cloudflare. And they've got a little thing. If you're under attack, you can go in there, flip a switch. And suddenly everybody who comes to your site may have to click a little check mark just to say they're human. And the bots can't click that check mark. So that stops them dead in their tracks. You want to avoid security by obscurity. Now there are plugins out there, and I know because I've tried them and used them, and they'll do things like move your login to another page or another folder. It doesn't work. You still have the same weaknesses. And if someone's scanning your site, they're gonna say, oh, well, it's not here, it's over there now. The bots might get fooled by this because they are going to go to a specific path. And if somebody looks at the results of their bot that's not finding how to log in, all they have to do is go scan your site. They're going to find the way to log in that you moved it from uh, wp-login.php. Maybe you moved it to my login as a folder. They're going to find it still. So obscurity doesn't work. It might delay the inevitable, but it will not stop it. So avoid things that promise you Oh yeah, protect your site by moving your login. It's, it's not the right thing to do. It's a waste of your time. I mentioned you want to use a secure web host. I recommend Cloudways because they have a lot of security on their sites. They do virtual private servers, so you're not going to have problems with a neighbor that's using up your resources and crashing your site that way or escalating and getting into your website. So that is something that you want to do. You want to use a secure web host. There are a lot of places out there that have mom and pop websites, servers, and they're cheap, they're easy to get into, but they don't have the resources to protect your site from anything else that gets into their site. So it's worth your while to go ahead and use a reputable, well-known and well-protected secure web host. You want to create offsite backups. You wanna keep in mind, a lot of web hosts will offer you said, yeah, we'll do backups for you. That's a nice thing. And it's, there's nothing wrong with that, except for the fact that your backup is then on the same server as your host. So if something happens to your host and that server goes down, or maybe you need to move suddenly to another host to get back up while they're fixing the problem, you can't get to your backup. You want to have a different site and that's going to be an offsite backup. So let me show you what I like. I use a plugin called Updraft Plus. And again, I'll put a link in the description below. This is a plugin that goes on your site and you can back up to their cloud backup service or you can back up to a number of other things. So for example, if you have Dropbox, Google Drive or Microsoft uh, Box or Box.com, then you can go ahead and use that space for your backups. And one of the things I like about it is every time I wanna do an update, there's a little checkbox to prompt me to do a backup before I do the update. And you can turn that off if you want to. It's in the settings. But that way, I've got a backup before I do something that may screw things up. So if I need to revert to something else prior to that mistake, then I've got a backup for it. And that is something that makes it easy. I can also schedule these backups, and I can schedule how much I backup. So daily, I might want to have my files and themes, or maybe weekly, I want to have my database tables backed up, or maybe files are only weekly and the database tables are backed up every time, you can mix and match how you want to have things backed up. Or you can back up everything. Now, it takes a little longer to back up everything, 
that is something that you can do. So you can choose how frequently you want to backup. You can have settings so that when you update, it'll prompt you for a backup first. And that goes off site. So if something goes wrong with your host or your site, you've got a complete backup that if worse came to worse and you just needed to go to another server, you could then restore it to that server. So I like Updraft Plus. I've tried different tools before for backup. To me, this one is the best one. As I said, I'll have a link in the description below. Get rid of stuff that you're not using. If you have deactivated some plugins or you've got old themes that you don't use anymore, delete them. You should always be able to get plugins again and get themes again, particularly if you've purchased them, you should be able to download them again and you'll want the current version anyways. But if there's something out there that you're not using, get rid of it. Those are potential entry points and you don't know if there may be a flaw in them that someone can find and use to gain access to your site. So anything that is a potential entry point, which is a plugin, a theme, a user account, if it's not needed, get rid of it. I mentioned this before, use reputable software because they have a reputation they want to protect and they don't want to put out something that has a known bug in it. It happens. It can happen to any vendor with any update, but the good thing is they will fix it and patch it. And often they'll give you a way to roll back to a previous version. So for example, I like WP Rocket as my caching software. Right there in the settings, there is an option to roll back to the previous version. So if there's something wrong with the version you've got, you can roll back to the previous version. And then that way you can wait until they've patched it before you do an update again. One of the things I like to do is I like to download my software from the vendor site and I keep that in the folder on my Dropbox. So that way I've got different versions. So in case I need to roll back and it's not clear how to do that from within the plugin or from the vendor site, then I've got versions that I can upload and replace a buggy version or a susceptible version of software. Audit user accounts. So every once in a while, go through and look, has somebody added a user account to your site? That's a bad sign if it has happened. But like I said, you may have vendors that get in there, or maybe you've had someone working on your site that no longer works for you. If you have a virtual assistant, that might be a case. You don't want to give them the same shared site. Everybody should have a unique user account that only they use. And if you've got people who no longer need or should have access to your site, get rid of those accounts. So that's why you need to audit every once in a while. Just go take a look, see what's there, and get rid of the stuff you don't need. Now, take a look at this. This came from my WordFence plugin. And you'll see there's a note here. Someone tried to get in, they'll give me their IP address, and they use an invalid username. I don't know who this is or why they chose this name. It's not a common one by any means. But they tried to sign in, and the duration of the lockout is four hours. This is a wonderful thing to have from a security plugin. You want it not only looking at who is logging in and maybe putting in the wrong password, but who is trying to log in with an account that doesn't exist because that is something, a typo could happen, but they've got to do this. I think you can set how many times that they can use an invalid account before they get locked out. Clearly, if you mistyped your own ID and put in the, the right password, you don't want to get locked out for four hours. So you can set this like maybe two or three times whatever your period you want. But this is part of auditing your user accounts and a good plugin or security tool can help you do that. I mentioned that maybe they can log in two or three times. You want to limit the login attempts. And this also turns off the bots. So a bot may be coming to you trying the same user account, but multiple passwords over and over again. Well, how many times do you want to let that bot work on your site like that? Probably not too much you want to limit the number of attempts that they can make and then lock them out. Because if they're trying, let's say 10 times, well, clearly they don't have the password. It's suspicious behavior. Most people who log in, they may have a problem once or twice, but usually by the third time, I'd say they get in. And if they don't, they've gone to the forgot password thing. If someone's trying to hack something over and over and over again, you don't want to let that go on indefinitely. So you want to limit the number of login attempts they can make. Again, that's something a good security plugin can do for you. All right, you want to be able to scan for malware because why assume that nothing's gone wrong? This is another reason why I like Cloudways. It is a service that's providing my hosting, 
but they are also interested in security. So let me go show you something there. So I'm on my Cloudways account and I typed in the help WordPress security. And there's a couple of things that you can do. You can detect security bugs using their vulnerability scanner. That's basically what's called penetration testing. And you can also look for malware. They had a um, integration with another tool. You can also protect you know, your site using bot protection. But these different tools that they have are what's helping you protect your site. So let's take a look to see if we can find malware. So you can see how to set up security antivirus software, detect security bugs using their uh, vulnerability scanner. So it's looking for malware. And those are a few different things you can integrate with an application. So maybe you've got a different service like Malcare Security, which is one I'll show you in a moment, that it works together with your host to help protect you. It is in the best interest of Cloudways, as well as all of their customers, that they have a security posture. And that's why I recommend using a service like Cloudways, not only because it's good hosting and it's fast and reliable, but it's also protecting you. And you've got better resources with a good and reputable host. All right, so we mentioned file editing. You wanna be able to turn that off. And that is, again, something WordFence will do for you, or so will other security things. You want to disable the ability for people to edit files inside of WordPress. It's just not the right way to do it. Because if somebody gets in and they can edit any file anywhere because they've got the permissions that WordPress itself has, then that just opens up a vulnerability. So we talked about disabling the XML RCP. Again, WordFence or another security tool can do that for you. There are other manual ways to do that. If you want to, you can go to Google and site, type in uh, disable XML RPC and find out ways to do that. You may want to hide the WordPress version. Again, tools like WordFence or even Perf Matters will hide which version of WordPress you're using. The reason you may want to do that is because hackers are always going in and trying to find out how to break into WordPress. Some versions are going to have different vulnerabilities than others. If they don't know which version you have, they don't know which vulnerability to attack. So again, it's a little bit of security by obscurity, but it's one that can help you out. So we talked about file permissions. Underneath your WordPress application, it's nothing but a collection of files. And you want to manage what files, who has access to them by changing their permissions. You can do this again with WordFence. You can do this with other security plugins. They make it very easy for you. If you're comfortable doing this, you can use a secure file transfer protocol or SFTP and go in there and manually change the permissions. I'm lazy. Although I know how to go in and do it manually, I'd rather just click a button on my WordPress plugin and have it change permissions for me. Now, this one you might want to think about secure the wp-config.php file. That's something that you definitely want to protect. Sometimes you want to move it out of your folder because that way WordPress can't necessarily, or people who get into WordPress can't get to it. You might want to put it a little level above. You can do this again with a good WordPress plugin. There's a lot of information in here, including all your user accounts. So if somebody can get inside of this uh, config file, they can get a list of names to use to try a brute force login or different types of attacks. All right, you want to change the database table prefix. By default, the Database table for WordPress is WP dash, and then it'll have different table names. You want to change that because again, the bots do what they're programmed to do and they're programmed to look for that WP dash. Well, if you change that prefix to something else and Cloudways makes it very easy for you to do that, then you don't have to worry about it. So get some gobbledygook letters that you put together, put something that's maybe unique to your site and use it as a prefix. It doesn't have to be long, it just has to be different because if they can't find the tables, then they can't inject anything to them. They can't try their other tricks to infect your database. This one, change the salt keys. So here's what happens. There's a file called .htaccess and you can put in something called a salt, which is basically an encryption phrase that you use. And you can change this every so often. By default, you might have your WordPress passwords and user IDs stored in a text file. Well, Salt will encrypt that information and then it will decrypt it for use. And this is something, like I said, you put in your .htaccess 
there are some plugins you can look for. So let me show you one. So if we go down to plugins, and not necessarily installed plugins, if we go to add a new plugin, just come over here to search salt. And probably the first result you're going to find is this one called Salt Shaker. And you can see it's got a good rating. It's got over 10,000 plus active installations. It's compatible with the version of WordPress last updated three months ago. You can install this. And if you need to know more details about it, you can just click this. And it'll give you an ex a reason why you want to use it. So you have the option to remain logged in long term. But this stuff gets stored in your cookies instead of a PHP session. Well, if someone can hijack your cookies, then your website is uh, vulnerable. Using Assault encrypts things, and that way it makes it harder to guess, and it's impossible for hackers to unscramble them. That's a very simple thing you can do, maybe a little eight-character gobbledygook thing as your Assault, and this will do it so you don't have to manually edit your salt inside of your .http or your .ht access file. I've got a couple of different ways I can do it. You can also go to Google and you can find, you know, a salt generator and you'll get some things over here. So there is uh, something from the API WordPress salt generator. You can find articles on what are salts, how they work and how you change them and how to generate salts and salt keys. So Securi, I haven't used, it may be that it does it itself, but you can go ahead and then generate a salt using some of the websites. And let's try this one. And you can see this little line over here where it says auth salt. That's the code that you're looking at that gets used to encrypt it. Now you can customize it for any length up to, uh, or excuse me, or 64 characters up to 2048, which is 2K. So you can create a salt and then there's uh, encryption on the login. And then when the session ends, there are no files that people can use to go back to log in or hijack to get into your site. You may want to block known malicious IPs. And sometimes your WordPress plugin or service will do this for you. So for example, here's one where you can see, you know, December at 6.30 in the morning, I had 479 attacks on my website for my photography site in the last 10 minutes. And my plugin blocked them because it knew the user agent was malicious. In other words, it didn't identify them by the IP address. The user agent is the bot. And it says, okay, I know this one is a bad actor. I'm going to block it. I'm using the free version. Premium versions will get more malicious protection, but you're going to pay for that. There's a way to do it for free, though. Let me show you that. I use Cloudflare for my DNS, and it will do a number of things. And one of the reasons I use it for DNS is it is the fastest one out there. It'll also provide an SSL certificate without having to install it on your server. But you can see that they've got a lot of stuff over here, and, and probably more than most you know, home bloggers or WordPress sites need. But the potential is there, and it's got also great denial of service uh, protection because they don't even get to your server. This happens on the network edge where your DNS is before any of this traffic gets passed along to your server and consumes resources. So that's the downside of a plugin is that your server has to fend off and fight all these attacks. If you use something like Cloudflare or Security, I presume, then it's happening outside of your server, so you're not spending those cycles. But there's a lot of things that this can do for you. So there's a web application firewall, so you can put rules up as to who can or what can get access or what gets denied. And you can see that they've got some really good protection or customer bases. So I mentioned IBM before, and you might recognize some of these different folks here. But let me, let me show you what I've got. So as I said, there's two-factor authentication. I've already put in my user ID and password, and it's prompting it. So I'll go to my Authy, and I'll look for Cloudflare. And this code expires, so it runs, you know, for about half a minute. Copy that. I paste it in. So if somebody doesn't have my Authy system, 
they're not going to get into this. So they can't make changes over here. So I've got a number of different websites. And let's take a look at this one, build sites with WP.com. If I'm getting attacked, all I have to do is toggle this switch. That's it. That's all the work I had to do. Now Cloudflare will do the rest of the work. And this is where it puts up that little checkbox where somebody comes in here like, are you human? You've probably seen that before. It's a site protected by Cloudflare. And they don't always necessarily need to put that checkbox up there. You might just see something spinning for a little bit while it's detecting your user agent, your location, your IP address. Because Cloudflare is so big and so popular, they gather a ton of data on who's safe and who's malicious. So it's a simple way to protect your site. And I'm using the free plan. I'm not paying for this. So there are ways that you can go ahead and change things. So you can turn it off. You can say, I'm under attack. Or I like to go with uh, essentially off. Because there's still some protection with that. So that is another advantage of using Cloudflare. You can get this on the free plan. All right, so you've done all the things. You've done everything right. And sadly, you may still have a problem. Because even though you do everything right, nothing is guaranteed 100%. I will tell you that if you do all the things that I've talked about here and you protect yourself, the odds are extremely low that you're going to have a problem. But what happens? Well, your first line of defense is to restore from an offsite backup. And you've kind of got to know how far back you can go to have a trusted version. It may not be the one that you just backed up yesterday. Maybe you had some software that had a problem, a plugin that had a problem, and you got infected a few days ago. You want to keep a period of time, and that's really up to you. It's like, how much storage space do you have for your backups, and how much, how much time can you go back, and then you restore it? Now, that means that if you've been doing some blogging or doing updates to your site when you restore it, those things aren't going to be there, but your site will be there, so you can restore from that. Now, another option is to hire a recovery service, and it's going to cost you some money, you're going to lose a lot of money if you're in business on a WordPress site and you've got bugs or malware or a problem like that. So let me show you a place where you can go and get some help. All right, so this is a service called Malcare. They guarantee they can remove malware from your site in five minutes, and they can probably do it with a click of a button. In other words, you don't have to wait for somebody to show up and go and investigate. They can clean your site now. Now, Malcare also has a plugin that they can put on your site or you can put on your site. And that's it. So let's talk about what we just talked about. There are people trying to hack into you all the time. And when you put a WordPress security plugin on your site or use a service, you're going to get all sorts of reports. Now, you can turn on or off the notifications. I kind of like to leave them on because it's a reminder people are trying to hack into my site. You also have some comfort knowing that you're protected. There are... Some services that have a better reputation than others. WordFence has a very good reputation. There's a free plugin that you can use. Securi has a very good reputation. I would trust them. I previously used and tested one that was called iThemes Security, and they have since changed the name. They've changed the name of a lot of their products. And there was one thing about it I liked about it. They had a biometric login. So, for example, I've got a Mac here. I've just got Touch ID. I didn't need a user ID or password. I could just put my finger over there, touch ID, and I was in. But the rest of their security was pretty weak. And I remember reading reviews. One of them said, this is not a security plugin at all. So I would recommend avoiding them. But if you stick with WordPress or with Security, those are the, probably the two top-rated plugins that you can look for. You may want to look into Cloudflare for some of their paid services to see if that's worth it for you. But that's really what you need to do. Now that you've got a good value understanding of how people attack you, why they attack you, and what you can do to protect yourself, you can sleep better at night. I have a free video course to help people who are just getting started going into business for themselves online. If you've never created a WordPress website before, this is going to help you out because it's not just talking about what you need to know to build WordPress. We certainly go over that in the bulk of the course. But it also talks about what you need to know about how to create a trusted business, how to get inside the mindset of your ideal customer. And then after you've created your website, it'll talk about how to get traffic to drive them to your website and what you're going to do on the website to convert those people. So it's very easy. Go to suburbiapress.com slash the website strategy. 
fill this in. You'll get immediate access. It is free, and I hope you enjoy it. All right. Thank you so much for joining me for this. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please let me know. As I said, I've been doing cybersecurity for decades. I'll be happy to answer any questions for you that I can. And until the next video, I'll see you then.